lab number two is going to be identifying igneous rocks. And similar to the minerals, you are given a handout to help you identify those igneous rocks, and then there's the assignment with numerous photographs of different igneous rocks. And in this handout, we uh, basically review lots of the things we did in lecture, different types of rocks and the rock cycle. Um, I also give you this flow chart here. You will not be using that in this lab. This is in case you ever find a rock that you have no idea if it's igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. This flow chart you can work through and it will tell you what rock type you're looking at. However, you know all the rocks in today's lab are going to be igneous, so you don't need to use that. I also in here have um, reminders of some of the ways we identify these igneous rocks, looking at the composition, you know, felsic, intermediate, mafic, or ultramafic, and then, of course, those different textures that are used for identifying them. This is the chart you will use to uh, help you identify these different igneous rocks. Um, here we have the uh, composition, right, felsic, intermediate, mafic, or ultramafic, and this lists the different minerals you would find in those. Remember, felsic is going to be light colored or pinkish, intermediate is going to be a medium gray, mafic is going to be a really dark color or black, and ultramafic is often greenish because it has lots of olivine in it. Then down here in this part of the chart, we have the different textures. And um, so let's, uh, for example, identify um, an, uh, an igneous rock. And actually, before we do that, let's just briefly review some of these different textures. So for example, this rock would be a phonetic because we can't really see very many of the tiny microscopic little crystals that make it up. If I looked at this under a microscope, I would see uh, different things, but not just looking at it like this. So that's aphenitic. This one would be considered phaneritic, because when I look at it, I can see the little pink feldspar crystals, a little black biotites, some little colorless quartzes, all through that. I can see them, but they're not large. So that would be a phaneritic texture. This would be a pegmatitic texture. Notice the size of some of these uh, feldspar crystals in there. And to be considered a pegmatite, it at least needs to be a centimeter, all the crystals. And here we have lots that are even bigger than that. Then we have things like porphyritic, where we have these larger crystals surrounded by smaller crystals. This is an extrusive porphyritic rock because the small crystals are hard to see. This one is also porphyritic. We have these bigger pink feldspar crystals, but they're surrounded by smaller black and white crystals. That's an intrusive porphyritic rock. And we know it's intrusive because the smaller crystals are easy to see. So let's see how we are going to use our chart here to identify, for example, this igneous rock. Well, the first thing you do when you are identifying the igneous rock is decide what texture it has. And I already said that this particular igneous rock is aphenitic. And so we know it's going to be in this aphenitic row. So it has to be one of these four rock types. The next thing you're going to do is figure out its composition, felsic, intermediate, mafic, or ultramafic. Well, this is a very light colored rock, so that's going to be considered felsic. So we know it has to be in the felsic column. So if we take the felsic column down to where it meets the aphenitic row, we have the rock rhyolite. And that's how you identify igneous rocks. First, 
figure out the texture, then figure out the composition, and that will take you to the proper name. As always, if you have any questions about this, let me know.